In this video, I'm going to be going over version 1.3 of the Blender Game Engine sprite add-on, and all the different things that have changed since the initial release. So if you don't know what the sprite add-on is, basically it's an add-on that replaces uh, the old animated textures here, and it replaces them with a completely new panel here. And it adds a whole bunch of other options, such as event-based animation, scrolling textures, and that sort of thing. So not too long after I released the initial add-on, I decided to add 11 different sprite sheets. And these were mainly just like explosions and sparks and smoke and that sort of thing that just takes time to render out. So I thought I might as well just throw that all in and then that will save you some time if you're trying to make something with your game. Shortly after I released version 1.1 of the add-on, I noticed it was quite difficult to get scrolling working in different directions for things like water and caustics, which I use very frequently in video games. Basically it's when you have a texture that goes in one direction and then another texture underneath that goes in a different direction and it gives you that sort of um, chaotic movement which water typically has. So I modified the code and added an example file and some instructions and that sort of thing to help people get started and then put that all together into the add-on and released it as version 1.2. Now more recently I got a post on the Blender Artist thread for this add-on and there was a user saying that it doesn't quite work, especially for event-based scrolling like a tank and also for layers selection like the layers keep getting reset. What I found most useful about this post though was that the user actually went and typed out what was the problem instead of just leaving a message saying it doesn't work and then expecting me to know what went wrong because I have spent a very long time testing this to try and make sure there's no bugs whatsoever but of course depending on how different people use it there might be a couple things that slip up. So after finding out there was a problem with the add-on, I spent the last week um, sort of adding more code and fixing it up to accommodate for the new changes and the new functionality. And this was also why there wasn't a tutorial last week. So the new version 1.3 now includes a whole bunch of features. So we have the main one, which is being able to add event-based scrolling. And sort of as a sub feature, we have being able to do this on multiple materials. On top of this, I also added the feature of having a button to remove the previous settings. So if you think anything is screwed up, you can just remove previous settings and start from scratch. And I've also added a bug fix regarding the previous layers not being selected when you click apply settings. So included in this update is also a tank demo with a setup for event based scrolling. So you can have um, the two different tire tracks moving in different directions depending uh, on which way the tank is going. And then also there are six more explosion sprite sheets added to the pack as well. So if you've already got it, again, you'll get this all for free, or if you buy it, you'll also get that all together. So at any point, if you'd like to see how any of these effects sort of work, you can just go ahead and check out the blend file. So that's all the new stuff that's added. So for the rest of this video, I'm just going to be going over a couple of tips um, in regards to using the add-on. So tip number one, when you go into your user preferences, into the add-ons and game engine, you'll see you have the sprite add-on here. And if you expand it, you can see here that there is a reporter bug option. And if you click that, it will take you to this page here where you can report the bug and give me a bit more information on it and then I'll try fix it as soon as I can. So for tip number two, if you have a line to camera selected on the sprite and you press play and you can't see anything, chances are the alignment is wrong. So to fix that, what you can do is just to check if it's wrong or not, go into local view and you see that this is Y direction, but you want the front face to be X direction. So to check which way is the right direction, you need to open up this panel here, and then we want to make sure back face culling is enabled, so you can see which way is the front face. So here you can see this is the back face, and this is the front face, and what we want to do is we want this X axis to be on the front face, pushing outwards. So all we have to do is press RZ90, and this way it will be facing this direction if we choose global and then all we have to do is press control A apply rotation and now if we press play the animation should work and here you'll notice in local view it's also facing in the X direction 
Now the last tip is for the new event based scrolling. So here we have this new um, sort of bar, if I just expand it, with the movement type. So the old type was frames and the new type is scrolling. And with the scrolling type we have this new property here called index. So index is basically the index of the material you want to move. And you can think of these as different channels that are working on the object. However, this index here is determined by the order in which you add the material. So say for example, I added the, oops, let's just move this up here. So say for example, I went and added the material left. If I added this first to my object, then this would be index zero. But as you saw there, it was actually index three. So if you're not sure which index it is, just have a play around and try change the index here and just click apply settings. And then you can test which one it is. So for example, here, if I select the wrong one, and then click apply settings and press play then you see we start getting the body of the tank moving instead of the tank tread on the left so that's fairly important also one cool thing you can do with it is you can have multiple animations running at the same time as you can see here when I turn the uh, tracks are moving in opposite directions and that's basically done by having a different index so here you can see I have material for my left which is uh, this left track here, and then a material for my right, which is the right track here. And the indexes here also reflect this. So within the material, you will need priority to give some actions more um, precedence to others. But then if you have different indexes, you don't need to worry about priority between those events. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment or share down below. If you have any other questions about the add-on or the tutorial or anything else, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. Again, if you've already bought the add-on, this will all be free. You just have to go to the Blender Market and you can download the new version. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the update. Have an awesome week and I'll see you guys in the next video.